What is going on guys? Welcome back to your 34th JavaScript tutorial and this tutorial is probably going to be pretty quick because I only have one small thing to talk about but it's a really cool technique and the easiest technique for printing out an array so you definitely want to pay attention. So let's go ahead and first create an array. Um, I'm just going to name it stuff, why the heck not, and new array. Let's just go ahead and create it right in here and go ahead and type like five random words like apples, um, pears, let's see, bacon, tuna, and ham. Simple enough. And actually, that looks like my grocery list. So anyways, we have an array called stuff, and it consists of five elements. The first thing that people like to do before they just go ahead and print it out is you probably want to sort this in some kind of order and might as well just use the sort method and it'll sort it in alphabetical order so go ahead and take stuff and use the sort method and now what this does is it sorts the array stuff so now whenever you print it out it's going to be in a nice neat alphabetical order so we're saying alright let's just go ahead and print out this array using you know the technique we learned before we go ahead and make a for loop and then we go ahead and set i equal to zero and then we go ahead and set i is less than and then we go ahead and count the elements one two three four five so we can go ahead and set i is less than five and this is going to loop through it five times simple enough but a better technique is this say later on you might add an element to your array or take an element out of your array so the array size might change from five to four or may go from like five to seven or something well then we would have to change our for loop and things would might get confusing so a better technique is this whenever you start at zero your second parameter can just be i is less than the length of that array so now later on if you were to change the size of this array you wouldn't have to change this variable this variable would automatically know to count however many items are in your array so I'll show you guys that later on but now again go ahead and increment my one and we'll be good to go so now all we have to do is tab and document dot write write anything you want out on the screen so using that technique we learned in the last tutorial if we just go ahead and put our array and use i as the index it's going to work perfectly since it's going to start at zero and go all the way to four and since there are five elements in our array zero one two three four that's going to give us our five um, indexes as i and it's going to work perfectly so we can print it out like this but it might appear a little jumbled so i want to go ahead and add a line break using that right there so now each item in our array will appear on a new line whenever we print it out on our web page. So let's go ahead and save this, launch in Chrome, and check it out. Our array, which was jumbled before, is now sorted in alphabetical order, and we also printed out nice and neat on each line. So go ahead and let me show you guys the benefit of this. So now let's go ahead and delete bacon or something and now we only have four elements in our array so before where we would have to change this variable it's gonna recount it and it's automatically gonna know that your length of the array has changed so no need to change a variable here well whenever we save it and refresh it our program is gonna continue to work fine so the technique I want to teach you guys in this tutorial was basically instead of a number here which would be the size of your array you can just use this length property and what this does is it automatically counts however many elements are in your array so you don't have to worry about what number appears there it's going to do all the dirty work for you and this is really useful when you have an array like of 800 elements or something so you don't have to count them every time and aside from that I just want to show you guys how you can use that index in the for loop to plug that in as the array index and loop through an array really easily and simply. So this is definitely combining this technique I taught you in this tutorial and the last technique. We learn basically how to use for loops and arrays to just build programs that work so easily together. So don't forget these techniques because they are definitely going to come in handy later on. So for now that's all I have for you guys. But uh yeah, I don't know what I'm going to be teaching in the next tutorial, but it's going to be pretty cool. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to sub, and I will see you next tutorial.